give us a sense of how challenging this is, particularly on the hostages. How tough is it? It's a very, very difficult negotiation uh, that we've been dealing with. Um, I, I always say that one of the most difficult mediation is a difficult between two parties that have zero confidence in each other and uh, 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 to have some sort of an indirect talks between the two sides is extremely difficult, you could imagine. So, uh, and with this violence increases every day, with the uh, bombing continuous every day, our task has, be, has become even more difficult. But despite that, we, we remain hopeful, we remain committed to our role of reaching out to the parties and uh, uh, with the aim of reaching a positive result. And we've had four hostages, as you say, um, out, but give us a sense of what could come next. Is it fair to say at the moment that no more releases are imminent in the coming hours or possibly even days? Our target is to release all of the civilian hostages. That's what we're working on and that's what we want to achieve. Since the first hour, we've been receiving several calls from countries around the globe asking Qatar's assistance to help their uh, uh, citizens in Gaza uh, release. It is not an easy uh, process. It's a very complicated uh, process, but we're working with all of our uh, efforts and our technical teams and trying to achieve that, uh, that goal. Is there an Im imminent release, do you think, in the coming hours or days? Well, we're working towards that. We're working towards that, and that's why I was saying uh, that the previous positive development helped us a lot to understand the process, but go more in deep when, when it comes to the procedures. So we remain hopeful, and we, uh, we hope that within the upcoming days, we can achieve that main objective. Because the impression being given by some is that they've kind of hit a stumbling block, and, yeah. and they're just impediments you can't get beyond. Well, you can, uh, as I mentioned, the difficulty is still there. If there's a continuing bombing, if there's a continuing escalation in the situation, our task is getting more difficult. The mediators need a period of calm needs uh, um, uh, um, a situation where we can speak easily to both parts and try to be more creative in, in bringing more initiatives that can get those civilians out. Can you talk about the mechanics of the release of hostages and, and, and how much the bombing gets in the way of that? I mean, what, what, what is the problem there? Is it, is it actually getting out to the hostages and, and, and getting them to safety? I, I think it's, it's, it's mainly the, the difficulties for us to talk to the, to the two sides. Uh, when an escalation happens and the killing of people over there, uh, it's getting more difficult uh, for us to uh, talk to the logically to the people uh, uh, sitting there on the on the negotiating table and allowing us to present initiative ideas to get them out. Uh, in any normal scenario, the, uh, if, you, if the mediator wants to perform its task in the best way possible as a state, then uh, uh, we need to reach a period of calm. We need to reach a period where we can speak logically to the both sides and come up with positive initiatives on, on that. Now, again, despite those difficulties, we've managed to create a breakthrough. We've managed to create some positive developments, and we're building upon that to, to uh, release everyone. And is it fair to say if Israel goes in on the ground, it's going to make your job a lot harder? Any escalation whatsoever is going to make our job really harder. Any escalation whatsoever. So, so we, we're, we're trying to send those messages as, um, uh, to, our, to our partners and friends. It's very important that everyone participate in this. Everyone should ask and seek uh, a level where uh, uh, we could achieve even more out of this, uh, this conflict. And I suppose from the Israeli point of view, they're saying, look, you know, they should be letting in the, the Red Cross in to, to, to talk to the hostages. Um, they know where they are, Hamas. Why not just hand them over? They're civilians. It's a war crime to hold them. What are the impediments to Hamas handing them over? Well, it's, it's, as again, it's a very difficult and complicated procedures. Uh, the good thing that we've managed to make some developments in the first few hours and the first few days, and, and, and we're building up on that. Uh, we understand that the challenges are unlimited, and, and maybe tomorrow we will have even more new challenges, but I think it's important for us to think creatively of how can we work together with our international partners to de-escalate the current situation, and that's our main focus. Because I mean, families in Britain and in countries around the world will be um, desperate for any information and, and news. What can you say to reassure them? Well, we are in direct communication with their authorities over there. We are in direct communication. I'm, I'm, I'm assigned even to update many of our friends and international partners of those progress and developments. We're getting there. Every day we become more hopeful of the, uh, 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 the possibility of um, uh, filling that gap and bringing the parties together. Uh, and I think with that continuation of efforts, we will be able to achieve. From this unique role Qatar has, and I don't think any other country is able to talk to all the players in this conflict really, are they, as well as you are. What are the chances of actually de-escalating what's happening here, but also what are the dangers, what's at stake for the region if that doesn't happen? Well, as I mentioned to you, we have some priorities. 
and our priority right now is not to expand that circle of violence beyond the borders of the conflict area itself. And that's a challenge that we've been facing. And to, to, to work on that matter, we've managed to work with our neighbors, regional players, and also international partners to make sure that we work together around um, um, you know, facing those, those challenges and presenting uh, permanent solutions to the issue. Now, in terms of this conflict, uh, I have to say, the only solution for it is the long-standing, permanent, and just solution for the Palestinian case. We've been calling for that, uh, and, and our political position has been clear since day one when it comes to, to the Palestine situation. Palestine deserved to have an independent state by itself, uh, uh, based on the Arab uh, Peace Initiative, two-state solution with uh, the border of 1967 uh, uh, and East Jerusalem as its capital. This is nothing new. We have mentioned that before. We said that we need to go back again to the main issue, which is a permanent solution to the issue, and not to think of only temporary solutions and forget about the Palestinian case. And I think that's the issue that, that we need to fo focus on, and that's the issue that uh, we've been discussing either in regional institutions, such as the GCC and the Arab League, but also international communities, such as the United Nations. As a seasoned diplomat, how worried are you, though, about the possibilities of escalation? It's always a worry. It's always a huge concern for us. And, and, and again, if there is no solution and there's no permanent solution for the current case, I think an, a possibility for an escalation is always there. As you were saying earlier, Qatar has been pivotal in negotiating aid deliveries uh, to Gaza over the years. What's your assessment of the humanitarian situation in Gaza at the moment? It's very, very critical. It's a very critical situation. The people in Gaza need the humanitarian assistance today more than ever. I think it's very essential, and Qatar has been calling in every single platform, that it's important to expand and extend uh, our reach out to the Palestinian people. Uh, we, we've seen the movement of a humanitarian aid uh, recently in the last few days, but it's not enough. I think it's important that we ask for more. It's important that we help uh, uh, the, the life stake, the people over there uh, uh, in Palestine for more peaceful and stable uh, situation. But, but if that doesn't happen, what's at stake, do you think, in Gaza? What happens next? I think, I think it's going to be disaster. I think it's going to be disaster. It's, uh, the situation over there is, is, is really horrible. The lack of water, food, medicine, uh, fuel to, to, to generate the energy over there. It, it, is, it is not uh, going to help sustaining the situation. So therefore, uh, when, when we thought of establishing this task force, we thought it's very critical to focus also on the humanitarian assistance and to find our pathway towards helping and supporting Gaza as we did before. And are both sides serious about trying to deal with that or are they both playing games in trying to sort of, I guess, leverage the concern about the humanitarian situation? Well, uh, it seems that the international communities in general recognize the importance of humanitarian aid. There is always fear about what types of humanitarian assistance that can be provided. Uh, uh, due to the, to the escalation that is happening between the two sides. But despite that, we've been always calling for the importance of supporting and helping the Palestinian people in any way, in any condition. Are we expecting big news soon, do you think? We hope so. We hope so. We're working towards that. And believe me, as soon as we secure that agreement, you will, you will, you will hear about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you so much.